Hello everyone, welcome to a big fat video I've been working on for quite a while now that I think will be useful to a lot of people, especially those getting into the genre, which is my list of the 30 greatest shmups of all time. And the funny thing about these style of lists, these top 10s, best of YouTuber videos, is that even though they are kind of generic and a little bit passe, yes passe, I got my big boy words out today, even though they are kind of standard fare, the thing about shmups that is kind of surprising is that a real comprehensive list of this kind hasn't really been made on YouTube. There have been people who've made my favorite SNES shmups or whatever it is, but as far as capturing the entire genre and going through a lot of the genre that doesn't really get it talked about or explored, I think this video will actually be useful to people who are just getting into it and may not even recognize some of these games, whereas like the greatest RPGs of all time or the greatest first person shooters of all time, the greatest platformers of all time, we all basically know what these games are and, and most of these lists are sort of an excuse to kind of give our takes on why Super Mario Bros is awesome and why The Legend of Zelda is awesome. But in this case, I not only want to help identify 30 shmups that I think are very influential within the genre, but also to talk a little bit about what makes a shmup good, what makes a shmup compelling, what makes one shmup better than another, because I think a lot of people aren't really familiar with these sort of concepts. And so let us begin by talking about the criteria I am using, because with all these types of lists, the one thing that always gets under my skin is that the reviewers never give the criteria of what they're judging on. It's usually just, these are my favorite. 10 games or whatever it is but as far as the criteria of okay what makes a shmup better than another shmup or in this case what makes a shmup an all-time great there are a number of metrics i'm going on so the first metric is overall influence meaning how much did this game not only influence the players and maybe gaming culture in general but more importantly how did this game influence other shmups that came afterward and this is something that i think is very important to highlight because a lot of really great shmups that have been really influential on other shmups aren't really all that known or aren't really all that talked about. And so this is the first metric I'm judging on. The second metric I'm judging on is playability over time. Basically, how well does this game hold up gameplay wise? When it was made in 1980 or whatever it was, I'm sure it was compelling. But is it still compelling in 2021, especially when it is followed by thousands of other games within the genre that may have improved upon its original ideas or implemented them in new ways. So this is the reason why Space Invaders is not going to be number one, because even though Space Invaders is a cool game and it was very influential, the first criteria, its playability doesn't really hold up in my opinion compared to what came after it. You can just say that many other shmups that came after Space Invaders gameplay wise are just more deep, more compelling, more interesting. So that's the second metric that I'm judging on is playability over time. And then the third metric is going to be creativity and uniqueness, meaning how unique is this shmup? Are you going to find a shmup quite like this, but is it unique in a compelling way? Because the thing about shmups is there are a lot of unique shmups out there, but a lot of them are kind of hit and miss sort of affairs. But when you find the one that is very creative and unique and you basically can only play it and get its taste in one location in that series or whatever it is, that's a real asset in my opinion. So that's the third metric. And then the fourth metric I'm judging on is refinement and polish. And this is a metric that I personally put a lot of value in. Basically, it isn't like the other ones where was it creative? Did it, did it do new things? This is something that a lot of people really latch onto pretty easily. But the last one that I think is very important is how polished, how finessed, how refined and well made is the game? Because for me, for example, there's a lot of games that come out that you could argue, hey, it doesn't really do anything all that new, but what it did do was take all the previous concepts and put them together in a very compelled, refined, polished package. And I think this is a quality that is very underrated in video game reviewing in general, but especially when it comes to shmup. And so that is the fourth and final metric and something that I put a lot of value in. So with all that being said, shall we begin with the list? And maybe I'll do one more little precursor here, which is to say that genre of shmups is very wide and very deep and that there is a ton of really really good titles within the genre and that there is no way in hell a person can actually make a definitive list of the 30 greatest shmups of all time there's no way that can be accomplished because what you're waiting what value you're looking into will always affect what you put on that list and why and there's so much quality within this genre that it's basically impossible to come up with anything sort of definitive. So if you're a big fan of a shmup and it didn't make it on this list, that doesn't mean it isn't really, really good or top tier or anything like that. It just means that this genre is so full of quality titles. And I'm not saying that to be 
you know, pandering or anything like that. It really is. It's challenging for me. There's a lot of shmups I really like that do not make it on this list. That's kind of like heartbreaking. But what I wanted to do with this list is not only just put out, oh, I like these 30 shmups. You should play them. It's to try and give you a selection of all the different styles and arrays of shmups. So, for instance, maybe a shmup could be argued to be on this list. But there's another shmup enough like it that does what it does just a little bit better to where I could take that off, put that other shmup in there. And then in its place, put a shmup in that's a little bit different, that has a little bit different styles, so that you get a good selection of different styles, rather than them all just being my 30 favorite bullet hells, which would probably be probably be something I'd be guilty of if I just went on my favorite. So with all that being said, let's begin with number 25. And you'll be wondering, why is it number 25? It's because some placings have games tied within the same slot, so it comes out to be 30, but I'm going by 25, if that makes sense. So number 25 goes to Thunder Force, Four, the Sega Genesis console shmup and you're probably wondering why did I go with Thunder Force 4 to begin with the reason why is I think this game is the epitome of that 16-bit console shmup if you want the best 16-bit console shmup I think Thunder Force 4 is arguably it it does everything that you're looking for to do within that format where it has a sort of progressive style system where you gain more weapons it's a little bit more expanded out than you would get in an arcade game the difficulty is a little bit more slightly curved rather than an arcade shmup where you hit stage 3 and you get that massive difficulty spike. So I think when it comes to the best console shmups, Thunder Force 4 is definitely up there. I have heard people think that Thunder Force 3 is as good. I don't think so. I think Thunder Force 4 is the best in the series and is probably the best console style shmup that you'll see in the 16-bit era. And then number 24, Truxton. Yes, Truxton is not just a meme on Classic Gaming Room. It is actually shmup and a very good shmup. And the reason why I chose Truxton for this placing is because even though it doesn't have a lot of name recognition for newer players and things like that, Truxton is very influential within the genre. A ton of people make games based off of Truxton. Its level design is very influential on a lot of Truxton style games that came out. For, for example, Crisis Wing came out, Super XYX you could even say. Um, so Truxton is a very influential game. It is very well made and it is that sort of archetypal Topland style shmup and I think a lot of people are huge fans of it. So number 24 goes to Truxton. Number 23 is a split between Mars Matrix and Giga Wing. So the reason why I split it here is because I can't decide which one's the better one of the two and both are so iconic that they deserve to be together. And this is something you will see a few times throughout the list is when you get two titles that are both pretty iconic and pretty equivalent, I'll just tie them into the same slot. And so Mar Mars Matrix and Giga Wing are both Takumi shmups. They're both very unique. I have a review of Mars Matrix. And the thing about these games is they have very unique mechanics. They're sort of barrier absorbing mechanics where you absorb bullets and spit them back out. They do it in different ways, but both of them are very well known for this style of gameplay. And again, when I was talking about earlier about uniqueness, these games are very unique. You're not going to find another shmups like them. If you've got to have your Mars Matrix, you got to have your Giga Wing, you basically are just stuck with these games because nothing since then has come out and really replicated this style and feel. And they have a real cold following, I guess you could say, of players that love these games a lot. And so this is why I think they deserve to be number 23 on the list. And so now we go to number 22 on the list, which is R-Type. So R-Type is one of those games that people could argue should be like number one or number two on the list, depending on on your list. And I'm sure you've seen R-Type much higher on other lists in the past. The reason why R-Type is number 22 on the list is because it is an extremely influential game. No denying that. It is one of the earlier shmups out there that really influenced a lot of what came after it. It is very well made. It is a very good game. It definitely deserves to be on the list. The question is, where do you put it? And the reason why I put it in number 22 is because even though it is an extremely good game, I think gameplay-wise, over time, a lot of its ideas have been iterated and improved upon, and that there are other games out there that do a lot of really great stuff, but at the same time, its gameplay is still very, very good, and so our type it's a little bit hard to place, but I'm going to give it number 22. Absolutely fantastic game, of course. So number 21 is going to go to Mushi Himisama. Again, depending on your opinions on Mushi, you could see it being much higher on this list or not deserving to be on this list at all. The reason why I chose Mushi in this slot is because I think it is a very influential game for a number of reasons, but a lot of those reasons aren't necessarily what you would probably think. So when you think Cave Bullet Hell Mushi Himisama, you'd probably assume, oh, it's really influential because of its bullet designs and all that sort of stuff. And it is, but there's other reasons why 
um, other games take that slot. But the reason why Mushi stands out to me is because its visual style has had a real influence on the genre. A lot of people look to Mushi and have made games since then that aren't just spaceship shooters, you know, that have a little bit more of a quirky theme and cool theme, and I think the bug theme is very cool, and there are some games like Space Moth DX that are very, um, very inspired by Mushi as far as the visuals and all that sort of stuff. And also Mushi came up with the difficulty selection system, or I think it was one of the first cave games to do that, that I'm aware of, where instead of having the sort of double loop system that you see in Dodonpachi and DOJ and all these other games, Katsui, Cave kind of sat down and thought, you know what, why don't we let the player just choose the difficulty at the selection screen rather than having to play two loops or whatever it is. That way they don't have to waste their time playing lower difficulty first loops and they also, and we also save money because we get credits faster. So very ingenious system. I think a lot of people sort of these days the sort of idea is if you can remove loops and instead introduce the multi-difficulty selection that Mushi introduced. So a very influential game, also very fun to play. It is quirky and weird as far as its scoring and has all kinds of weird glitches and auto fire things going on. Check out Kiwi's channel if you want to see some insane Mushi gameplay. But it is a very, very good game and I think definitely deserve, definitely deserves to be on the list. And also is sort of a linchpin between a lot of people going from Toho to Cave. A lot of players like Juju Kenobi, for example, went from playing Toho to playing Mushi to playing Cave and playing the arcade genre. I think it's a great introduction to the Toho players, especially since it has such a strong Steam port. So 21 goes to Mushi. Number 20 is going to go to Raiden. So when I was growing up, if you asked me what is a shmup, I would just say it's Raiden. From what I remember speaking to UBO, Raiden is the most successful shmup commercially, as in it sold the most units. So most likely if you go to an arcade, it might have Raiden if it's going to have a shmup. That was definitely the case growing up for me where a lot of my arcades, we didn't have cave games, we didn't have Psycho games, we didn't have all these other, we'd have a few Capcom ones, but overall Raiden was the shmup in the arcade. And so for that reason alone, I think it definitely deserves to be on the list. It also has a very unique gameplay style that it is funny because when you first get into the genre, you assume that Raiden is sort of the default style of shmupping, but you realize, no, Raiden's really unique where it's kind of like Psycho on crack. It has in crazy fast bullet speed. It's kind of brutal patterns. It's kind of mean to you. It has all these weird secrets, but it introduced so many people into the genre. It is so prolific and so well sold. I think it definitely deserves to be on the list. And it has some of the most wide stream appeal. A lot of people recognize the Raiden brand where they won't recognize something like Don Pachi, at least in the West. And I really like how they got the game out there and sold it internationally, whereas Cave, those naughty boys, kept a lot of their games in Japan or took a long time to get them internationally and all that sort of thing. And then up next, we have number 19, which is Gradius. Again, like our type, Gradius is one of those very influential early shmups that came out. For me, I feel like Gradius is one of the best early shmups out there. It's something I've been a fan of. Even when I was a little bit more picky about playing old school shmups, Gradius' game design is absolutely awesome and is so influential on the genre. So many games have elements from Gradius within them when it comes to the level design, when it comes to the boss fights, when it comes to the option formations, when it comes to the power-up system. Gradius is incredibly influential as a game. You can go through and pick out different ones in the series as far as your favorites. My favorite in the series is Gradius 5, which isn't actually made by uh, Konami, which is funny enough. But overall, Gradius is an extremely influential game, an extremely influential series. There's so much to say about it, and what I love about the Vic Viper especially is it introduced the idea of having a nice low profile hitbox for your shmup. When you go back and play old arcade shmups, you realize, wow, Gradius kind of had this ahead of everyone else where our type and all these other old school shmups have these big fat hitboxes. The Vic Viper, you know, he's got a big hitbox by today's standards, but still by old standards, slim, sexy little hitbox. So Gradius absolutely has to be on the list somewhere. You can sort of say the Gradius series as well in this. Up next, we have number 18, Castle Shikigami 2, which I believe is the favorite of this series, so you can kind of say the Shikigami series in this as well. This is a very unique and sort of a quirky shmup series where somewhere between a cave game and a Toho and other quirky elements mixed in there as well. Top, top-notch voice acting, by the way. Hi, what a cute boy. Interested in my body, aren't you? Me too is one of those games that people really like this series a lot. You're kind of in the 
in crowd if you know about Castle Shikigami and you like it. That's at least what I've sort of picked up on. So I thought it'd be great to include it on the list for people who have maybe never been introduced into it before. It also has a hilarious international release where it looks like you're playing Charlie's Angels or something. It was nice try alpha systems. They really uh, tried to get sneaky with it, but I don't think it quite worked out commercially. A very well regarded series for the people who are big fans of the genre. Up next, this will be a surprise pick for a lot of people, Hellsinker. So what is Hellsinker? I don't know what Hellsinker is. This is a very, very unique shmup, and I'm not just saying that. This game is an indie shmup made in Japan. I can't remember when it was made, probably in the 2010s at some point, but it has been very influential on the sort of indie doujin style shmups out there. And there's nothing quite like that, and I mean this very seriously. I don't even quite understand how this game works, to be honest. I'm going to have to do a whole video not only reviewing the game, but figuring out how it plays. But from what I understand, people who develop shmups, people who look into the, especially the Japanese indie side of things, this game has been hugely influential, and there's something very cool and unique about it, and it's just got such swag and style. This game, I think, if you haven't checked it out before, Maybe wait till I make a video about it because it is pretty complicated and not exactly the easiest way to get into the genre, but it has so many interesting and innovative ideas that I absolutely had to put it on the list. So number 17 goes to Hellsinker. So then number 16 is a two-way tie between Xevious and Blazing Star. Different games, but I decided to put them in the same slot for a few reasons. So Xevious is one of those games, I actually haven't played much of Xevious, but whenever you have conversations about shmups and, oh, what shmup did this first, what shmup did that first, Xevious ends up in these conversations a lot. I can't remember if it was in the bullet hell conversation where people talked about a lot of concepts and bullet hells originated in Xevious. Xevious was very innovative and just came up with a lot of stuff in the modern shmupping world that we kind of take for granted. So absolutely deserves to be on the list. Again, a bit underrated too. A lot of people outside the genre don't really know much about Xevious, so I thought it'd be good to include it. Then... Blazing Star, maybe there's some personal bias here, but I'm a big fan of Blazing Star, and it sort of encapsulates the Neo Geo style shmup. If you think Neo Geo, I always think Blazing Star. Very well made game, kind of an error to our type. Blazing Star is sort of a follow up to a lot of the ideas that our type in introduced. I personally enjoy it more than our type. I wouldn't be so comfortable saying it's better than our type, but I do know that a lot of fans of the arcade genre, like WTN, one of the best players out there loves this game and i guess he has the world record in it he's the donanpachi world record holder it is very well regarded very well loved and it also originated the meme epic fail so if you know the meme back in the 2000s or whenever it was of epic fail you remember that that meme came from the great english of blazing star i do know it influences some modern indie shmups coming out like wings of blue star which is i think very influenced by blazing star you'll see it in other places too the neo geo style very very cool game the final boss is a giant evil baby so you can't uh, can't go wrong there next up number 15 maybe a controversial pick here but i'll try my best to justify it dodonpachi daifukatsu dfk the thing is is whenever you look at top 25 shmups of all time dfk usually doesn't quite make the cut compared to its sibling games but i think over the years dfk has really built a huge fan base and a while ago, I tried to create this sort of large-scale poll of shmup players where I asked them what shmups you were playing. I got about 150 responses. I was hoping to get more. But of that 150 responses, DFK is possibly the most popular shmup out there right now. As in, most shmup players are playing DFK or have played DFK or they like DFK. It is a very, very popular shmup. Probably because the Steam port is also very accessible. That makes a big difference. But still, a very cool shmup. And Cave kind of sat down and decided, hey, we're going to take the Dodonpachi series in a separate direction. And so I think this is why it is a little bit controversial in some cases. But overall, big fans of the DDP series, I think, have come around to DFK and how cool it is. And it has the auto-bombing system, but it works in with the scoring system. It has a crazy amount of arranges and different modes. It just throws everything at the player. The graphics look fantastic. The soundtrack is slamming. DFK, I personally think, is a little bit underrated and... I think its popularity has really been growing over time, so I thought it would be a great inclusion at number 15. Number 14, again, another sleeper hit, another cult classic that has had a crazy amount of influence on the genre itself, but maybe a lot of people haven't heard of or haven't played, which is Rayforce. 
Another thing about Rayforce Force, it has a billion other different titles and pseudonyms it goes under. It's had to change its identity to get away from the cops a few times, but Rayforce Force is crazy influential within the genre, specifically because of what I call the Rayforce Force attack. I don't know what else to call it. We have that sort of lock-on homing system that goes in and you can charge it up and the longer you hold it on there, it attacks and hits things. This is famously influential on Crimson Clover, which is like the exact same attack with some different usages, but you can see Rayforce has been influential. A lot of other games use this attack, though. Um, Zero Ranger, there's a weapon in it. That's I call the Rayforce weapon. I don't know what the official term is for it, but just that attack alone is very influential. But also, there's other things about Rayforce that I think are really great and underrated. For example, the visual presentation is really cool. The fact that you don't need to use an auto fire is really cool. It's one of the first arcade shmups that I am aware of that it has no need to use auto fire. The, there's no bomb. Again, I wonder if this was an influence on Zero Ranger. It has kind of a chunky hitbox, but still somewhere between a caravan style shmup and a bullet hell. Great boss designs. Another cool thing is the cinematic presentation of it with the stage transitions where there's no screens in between gameplay, which I'm a big fan of. I like that a lot, that there's no transition screens. You just go from one stage to another and it has I guess in a film comparison, if you ever heard of the film Birdman, where there's no cut and the entire film is one take, this is Rayforce. Rayforce is the Birdman of shmups where it's all one take. It goes from stage to stage with no transition screens. I think that's really cool. And it kind of tries to make sense of the screen transitions too, where I know Topline games just kind of a fade, a fade to black and white, but this one, no, you actually like go through different terrain from stage to stage. Really neat idea. I hope I don't influence this game's popularity too much, but at, because at some point I do want to get my hands on the PCB. This is a, a sleeper hit, a huge, huge game in my opinion, so Rayforce definitely deserves to be on the list. And then we go to number 13, Cho Ren Sha. So this is one of the earliest examples of a PC indie shmup or doujin shmup, very influential on the genre. It feels like an arcade shmup that was made for a PC, such a cool game great gameplay and I know a lot of people when you talk to them about hey where did you get influence for this idea where'd you get influence for that idea especially the indie shmup scene a lot of people talk about Cho Ren Sha great gameplay really cool soundtrack again a game that I think a lot of people are not aware of outside the genre but is very influential within the genre especially when it comes to people making modern indie shmups and all that sort of thing I'm gonna actually be doing a review on Cho Ren Sha here up next for my channel or pretty soon for this month so I'll have a lot more to say about it then but I think number 13 is a very appropriate spot which follows up to number 12 which are Zero Ranger and Blue Revolver they are twins in my mind I cannot think of one without thinking of the other both great landmark indie shmups at least in my opinion a lot of people when they look at modern indie shmups or talk about modern shmup design I mean are you gonna get away without talking about Zero Ranger or Blue Revolver I don't think so both very, very excellent games. Huge fans of both of them. Both have very cool design sensibilities that I think fit really well with people getting into the genre. Huge amount of influence already in the time they've been made. I have interviews with both sets of devs if you want to hear more about the games and what made and what went into making them. And so yes, you're a fan of shmups or, and you own a PC. I think it's absolutely worth your time to get both of these games. And they're also kind of great stepping stones into what I'm hoping is a sort of renaissance or a new take on shmup design because a lot of the shmup game design aspects of the past while they are kind of cool like credits and all that sort of stuff that doesn't really make sense in a modern context and so both of these games have really cool ways of approaching this as time goes on they're just going to become more and more influential so i think number 12 is a great slot for both of them number 11 batsugun batsugun is on the list many people cite batsugun as the very first bullet hell I'm comfortable with that. I could say, yeah, Batsugun can be the first bullet hell. Some people want to give it to other games. That's always a matter of opinion, but I think it's pretty widely considered the first bullet hell and one of the best Topland games, probably my favorite one. I actually enjoy Batsugun more than the first Don Pachi. Yes, Batsugun is sort of the first stepping stone of what we will later see in the Don Pachi series. The scoring system in it is a little bit silly. It's one loop and most of it comes down to doing this uh, glitch on a boss. Classic Donanpachi style, right? Uh, what would it be without a big glitch? But Batsugan, especially it has a special edition and uh, a sort of follow-up. Great ports on the Saturn. I have a whole review of Batsugan if you want to check that out. So I won't talk about it too much here, but Batsugan, 
you can't get away without it, right? Number 10, Darius Gaiden. Again, one of those very influential games. One of those games where if you're a fan of the genre, and you talk to fellow fans of the genre, a lot of them are going to talk about how much they enjoy Darius Gaiden and how great it is. I think it is by far the best in the Darius series. I know there are some other great uh, entries in Darius, but I think also Darius Gaiden, for me personally, was the point where Darius went from being a okay-ish, kind of cool shmup series to being like, okay, now we got some real badass stuff going on here. The soundtrack is great. The idea of including a bomb, I think, was a good idea, especially the giant, massive bomb. The trippy nature of the visuals, the sort of quirky elements of the presentation. I know a lot of people really like that a lot. I believe Darius Gaiden is Zun, the Toho creator's favorite shmup, at least he's said that in the past. There's just a lot to love with this game and a lot to learn from as well if you're looking to make horizontal shmups and how to present them in cool and fun ways. I think Darius Gaiden, it's by far my favorite in the Darius series and uh, I think for good reason. Number nine. Oh boy, number nine. I think everyone assumes, at least a lot of people would assume, this entry would be number one on the list. It tends to be number one on most people's lists. Ikaruga and Radiant Gun, it's a split. I put them both in the same slots. Big surprise, Ikaruga is not number one. Ikaruga, in my opinion, is not the greatest shmup of all time. However, Ikaruga is a very divisive shmup in some ways, where people will say, oh, it's not even a shmup, it's a puzzle game. I don't really buy that. I think it is a shmup, obviously. But the thing about Ikaruga is I do think that a lot of people, it has great recognizability. It is probably the most recognized shmup out there where people talk about shmups where I said, you know, 20 years ago when I was a young boy, Raiden was a shmup, right? Whenever you said, what's a shmup? Raiden. These days, if you say, what's a shmup? Ikaruga. It kind of took it that slot. Very commercially successful, I would assume. Um, people talk about it, cover it. It's one of the few shmups that will get mainstream coverage people outside the genre will talk about it donkey or whoever it is people will talk about ikaruga it has a very cool mechanic with the polarity system it's made by treasure and i think treasure are incredible game developers incredible studio the thing about treasure and i think this is a good explanation of my thoughts on ikaruga is that treasure makes games of all types of different styles and genres and they all have that treasure touch that treasure flair and so they're not ever quite fully within what you're gonna get within the genre think of a uh, so my favorite treasure game for example is a uh, sin and punishment star successor and that game is a rail shooter but it incorporates all these different elements into it that aren't just what you'd find in other rail shooters and so it has this unique flavor and style ikaruga is the same way radiant silver gun is the same way they are fantastic shmups they're well-made shmups but they have that sort of quirkiness and treasure touch that doesn't quite put them as like the apex of the genre because they ignore certain things that the genre does well and they sort of add things that genre typically doesn't do and so I think number nine is a very fair placing for Ikaruga and Radiant Silver Gun. They deserve to be recognized, they deserve to be on the list, they are really well made games and they have a lot of scoring depth, well at least Ikaruga does, I don't know as much about Radiant Silver Gun, but I do not think Ikaruga is the greatest shmup of all time and I think uh, it's a little bit silly when you see those lists and one after another, Ikaruga ends up on the top. I definitely don't think so. Number eight, another split between the Psycho games, so Strikers 1945-2 and Gunbird 2. I remember having a conversation with Plasmo, and he felt that Psycho is the most underrated shmup developer of all time, and I would probably agree with that there as well. Psycho make excellent, well-made games, but for whatever reason, they are overshadowed by their cave and rising brethren, but still, Strikers 1945-2 and Gunbird 2 both are considered kind of the sort of top tier within the Psycho catalog. Objectively speaking, Strikers is probably better than Gunbird 2, but I like them both a lot. And Gunbird 2 is my personal favorite Psycho game, and both have a lot to offer, and both have their own unique styles, and have tons of scoring depth, and I know they're especially popular among the Chinese players. I think the world record holder for Strikers, I'll have to double check this, is a Chinese player, or probably not going to find many cave cabinets outside of Japan. But you will certainly find Psycho Cabots all over the place, and they're affordable, they're easy to get. I actually own Strikers 2 on PCB, I'm going to do a video about that pretty soon. Yeah, there's definitely no denying the Psycho games deserve their day in the sun, and so for that, I give them the number 8 slot. Number 7, Crimson Clover, World Explosion, World Ignition, whatever version you want it to be, both are very fantastic. I think World Explosion will come to the PC 
and will eventually surplant World Ignition anyway. As of right now, it is on the Switch only. And in its form on the Switch only, I don't feel as comfortable saying it's better than World Ignition. But once it comes to the PC, it's all good. So I'll give it to it now. World Explosion, Crimson Clover. What can you say about it? I always like to think of it as the official, unofficial successor to Cave. And some of the Cave games that we love, like when people talk about, hey, I wish they made a follow-up to Ketsui. I wish they made a follow-up to the Donanpachi series. I think Crimson Clover is the closest you're going to get. And the amount of quality and the amount of things it offers is honestly very, very comparable to what you're going to get in a mainline, real-deal Cave release, Crimson Clover. Clover Tack, his uh, name comes from being Cave Lover, and he is a super player himself. I have a whole video about this as well. But there's no denying Crimson Clover, in my opinion, is one of the best shmups ever made. The scoring depth, the modes, the overall survival gameplay, it just has it all. The unique idea of blending the Donanpachi and Ketsui with the Rayforce attack. I mean, what a cool concept. I am a huge fan of this game. I love playing it. It's one of those games when you sit down and play it for score. You just have a fun time. You don't really beat your head against the wall as much as with some of the other cave games. Yeah, I can't recommend it enough. I think it's a sort of an essential purchase for shmup, most shmup players. Even if you aren't that big of a fan of Bullet Hells, I would still recommend you give Crimson Clover a try because it has all these great different modes and everything like that. So enough about Crimson Clover. Of course, it's going to make it on my list. Number six, Armed Police Batrider. So in one of my very first podcast episodes with Eaglet, I remember making the mistake of calling this Armored Police Batrider, which I think also sounds kind of cool. But no, it is Armed Police Batrider because they're armed and they're ready to kill. What a cool game. Of course, it's a raising title. Very along the lines of another game we're going to see later on this list. Batrider, what can you say about it? I always like to think of Batrider as the king of fighters of shmups where it takes the rising catalog and makes a game with all the characters in it. And it is one of the few shmups where you actually need like an, a legit tier list to know because there's all these different characters and they can do all these different things. What a cool concept. I'd love to see more games like this, like a cave style Batrider where they take all the cave characters and have um, Rico and the Donopachi ships and Panzer, you know, all this sort of stuff. I think it's a really cool concept. The gameplay itself is really fun very challenging the rank will beat you down till you cry and from what i understand the rank of this game is even more brutal and punishing than the rank of another game that will appear later on this list uh, bat rider people love this game we need a port of it i think it should be on the short list of m2's ports you know they should sit down and make a little checklist they should have dodon pachi on there maybe throw in the doj on there they need that list, and Batrider is definitely on that list. And I know people have been really looking forward to see this. I don't think it's had an official port anywhere, even like a crappy PS1 port or anything like that. If you're going to check it out, check it out on um, Low Latency MAME or check it out on Shmup Arch. A playable in both places. Very, very good game. Number five, any surprise. Of course it's on the list. If you think I'm making a greatest shmups of all time list on this channel, and this shmup is not appearing on this list in a high format, you don't know me at all. Dodon Pachi, my favorite shmup of all time, my personal favorite. The shmup I've by far played more than any other. And if you look at this channel, has way more content on this channel than any other shmup. And will continue to because I plan to make some more DDP videos here soon. The thing is, I talk about this game so much on my channel. I can go on about it forever and ever. I just want to point you to dump, uh, some different places, I suppose. One is my interview with... Prometheus, where we talk a lot about Donanpachi, and Prometheus was previously the Western record holder for Donanpachi, and we have a lot to say about this game. This was actually before I got the two wall, so check that interview out. Donanpachi, there's so much to love about it. It's brutal, cruel game design as far as the scoring system when you can't die, you can't bomb. I remember reading an interview with one of the super players, I can't remember which one, where he said like approximation of what he says, but basically only punks hit the bomb button. You basically turn off your bomb button if you want to win until Hibachi at the end. What a great game. So much to say about it. Absolutely on the list. So I'm putting it in the number five slot because as much as I am personally inclined to believe it is higher than that when you talk to fellow players of the genre and um, it does have certain flaws that kind of hold it back a little bit but still so many excellent concepts and ideas that have been crazy influential on the genre of falling. Donanpachi is absolutely one of the most influential shmups of all time there's no denying that 
and it also has such refinement and precision with the gameplay and polish and I can go on and on blah 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 of course Don Pachi is number five one of my favorites of all time number four Mushihimi Sama Futari of course Futari is on the list this game's depth this game's excellence of design are absolutely incredible I think it is a very influential shmup on what came after the thing about it that has sort of diminished its influence is that it came later than the other games most of the other games on this list but as far as moving into the future, I think we're going to see more and more people saying Futari influenced this, Futari influenced that. The scoring system, the idea of having these massive cancels, the overall visual splendor of the game. I think that's why it's connected with so many people, why people really enjoy checking out the live demonstrations of this game and why it is such a fan favorite to watch. Because the visual splendor of the game is crazy and beautiful. And the scoring system, they kind of sat down and thought, Okay, we kind of made some mistakes in the original Mushi, as fun as that game is. Let's kind of refine it here. Let's make things a little bit more simple, a little bit more accessible. The 360 port is one of the best 360 ports, if not the best 360 port. You can actually get two frames of input lag. Also has all these different modes. And the modes themselves are very well regarded. So not only is Mushi Fatari very well regarded, it has different ranges, whether it's like 0.1, and then there's the 1.5 everyone plays. And then there's the black label. This game has got a lot to offer. You could just spend years and years just playing Futari and be perfectly happy and be perfectly fulfilled. What a fantastic game. And what I think puts it so high on the list, again, is just it has all the things you're looking for. So it has absolutely incredible presentation, crazy gameplay, scoring system that is deep and engaging, has some quirks, but it's still very, very good and very compelling and well put together. But I think it's a hard argument to say it is not one of the best shmups ever made. At least appreciate the bullet hell style that came afterward. And I'm going to have a whole video about what I think about bullet hell in general. Obviously, I'm a big fan of it. But yes, Butari, you got to love it. Now we come to number three. And this is where the list gets a little bit interesting and strange and definitely controversial. Because in my opinion, when I sat down, I think these top three shmups themselves are sort of in their little like tier within themselves so if i made it this into a tier list you know fatari donampachi bat rider crimson clover strikers i think they would all be sort of the a tier or whatever and then these three i would consider the s tier these are the top three shmups i think there's sort of a dividing line between them and the rest of the genre and so where you want to place these three i think is a big matter of opinion you could put the one you can put them in whatever order you want I'm going to try and justify the order I present them here, but I think these three, these top three shmups are, they all have an argument, I think, for best in the genre. So, number three, I'm going to give to Battle Garega. Again, some people would definitely put Garega as number one. I'm putting Garega as number three. So, I have a whole video about talking about is Battle Garega the greatest shmup ever made. The thing about Battle Garega that makes it such a great shmup and makes it so well regarded and so deep is that it has a very open style of scoring. No other shmup, I think, quite matches Garega in its scoring system as far as the openness and depth and intrigue. And the thing about Garega, I remember talking about this as well with other players, is that within the first minute of gameplay, you can look at someone playing Garega and be like, oh, this guy's world record tier player. This guy's very good. Just by the way they move the ship, by the way they control their options, because of the depth of the gameplay and the openness of the scoring, how you're just trying to milk every little point out of this game and you can get it in all these different ways and the game rewards you for scoring in this area and then punishes you in scoring in that area with the ranking system. It has all these crazy sort of milks and glitches. The game is an organic masterpiece. I do not think Yagawa sat down and envisioned what Grega would become, but what I think he did do and I think uh, more developers of this style need to be given credit for is he sat down and thought, I'm going to make this a little bit more open-ended. I'm going to make that open-ended. I'm going to give you a sort of template of what I kind of think works. But the scoring system is so open-ended. So Grega is one of the games where I remember talking to Eaglet about it. And Eaglet's the Western record holder for a lot of the ships. And we were talking about the Japanese record scores. And I asked him, when do you expect to kind of catch up with the Japanese players? Or what separates you from the Japanese players? And I'm paraphrasing what Eaglet said here. But basically, he, Eaglet said... I don't even know where they get some of the points they're getting. Even if you watch the replays, I don't even know where some of these points come from. Just because of how in-depth the scoring system of this game is and how you can piece together all these different strategies and routes and 
the game is just very innovative and fresh and has been played constantly for score since it came out and has held up to constant score play, which is very impressive. No one sat down and kind of fix, figured out Grega, right? There's still so much to explore and learn. And, you know, um, Kamui, for example, has been playing the game for a long time, maybe longer than some people watching this channel have been alive. And I don't think Kamui's quite figured out Grega yet. And then the PS4 port is easily one of the best ports of all time. And so this game is well played, well documented, well loved. Grega is just where it's at. And I think people who dislike Grega, um, I would say, well, you know, if you dislike Grega, that's fine. But maybe you should uh, give it another chance because Grega is one of those games that takes time to understand it and get into it. And I'm not saying that to be elitist because when I first played Grega, I was like, eh, it's all right. It's kind of cool, but I wasn't that into it. But over time... The more you play it, the more you invest into it, the more fun it gets too. And when I was going for the one, uh, one CC of Grega, pretty unlike any of the other one CCs I'd done before, where it's very challenging, but the challenge was very organic and it was like run to run. Whereas in Donanpachi, for example, when I was going for the two wall, I was just save state grinding and doing the same sections over and over and over and over and over for hours. And Grega had the sort of Li more lively feel to it where sitting down and save stating the same section in Grega for 30 minutes or whatever probably isn't as effective as like playing through the whole stage over and over and like learning the different setups and st studying the systems and there's just so much openness to this game it's very unique and I think um absolutely is one of the greatest shmups ever made of course the presentation too whenever I talk about great whenever I think about shmup presentation and shmup graphics and style, I always look to Grega and think, is this a good, like, whenever I look at how should an enemy death animation look? Here, let's look at Grega. How should an enemy hit look? Let's look at Grega. Grega is one of those games where you can just learn a lot about shmup design just by studying it. So, number three goes to Battle Grega. Number two, Ketsui. So much to say about Ketsui. I think I did a whole shmup saga on it. I don't know. Yeah, I did a review of Ketsui as well. The thing about Ketsui is I think it is peaks of cave game design it is putting together all the pieces of what makes cave great in one package that is ketsui it's unique it's interesting it's brutal it beats you down for being scared it forces you to play aggressively it forces you to point blank it forces you to engage in these incredible bullet patterns it gets that hitbox nice and small it's a rush it's got a crazy cool soundtrack the visuals are some of the best cave has ever come up with ketsui is just the whole package there's really nothing that you look at it and say, this is a problem. There's very few things like that in Ketsui that I can even think of. Maybe Moglar, who's played Ketsui thousands of hours at this point, can weigh in here. There's a few little things here and there, but Ketsui is one of those games, there's no rank. I'm not a big fan of the suicide bullets, but they do work. Um, there's the multi-loops, there's the great TLB that avoids kind of making you pay resource taxes, which Hibachi kind of makes you do. Ketsui is, I think, just... Mm, perfection as far as shmup design again one of those games when you talk to people and they talk about especially like people making shmups now and you say where'd you get this idea where'd you get that idea ketsui ketsui just it, it's just so much comes from this game and i can't really quite say enough about it i am currently working on getting my omote clear of it so tune into my channel i'll be streaming that on and off probably over the next few months until i get it so yeah, I'm not sure what else to say about the game without doing a full-on review of it. Uh, you can get the uh, PCB on PGM, a bootleg of it, for pretty affordable. There's the PS4 port, get that. Don't get the 360 port, get the PS4 port. There's so many great ways to play this game, very accessible, especially on the PS4, which people are now like setting near-world record scores on the PS4 port, and if Moglar has his way, you might see a world record appear on that PS4 port. So, Destiny... Probably the best PS4 game is that or uh, Battle Grega. These two games alone make, uh, I think, the PS4 a real contender for one of the best shmup consoles ever. But I'm getting a little bit sidetracked. But that's just building up the anticipation. The greatest shmup of all time, at least according to myself. And I think a lot of people would agree. Some people wouldn't, of course. Dodonpachi DOJ. Who saw that coming, right? Of course. When I said Battlegrade and Ketsui, I think most of you all, or many of you all, probably guessed, yes, I believe very strongly, if it's not Ketsui, if it's not Battlegrade, then absolutely the greatest shmup of all time is Donanpachi DOJ, the game that just does everything right. 
again, like Ketsui, there's very few things that you can find flaws with in DOJ. The, the only thing that's kind of weird about DOJ is it has two different versions. It has a black label and white label. They do different things. But the thing about it that I think is really cool is I think both versions are very interesting, very cool. And it kind of adds to it, you know, like it's like having a range, but even cooler because it's like a different version of the game. And it's hard to explain in a, without going on and on why it is such a great game and why it is, oh, I think overall the best games. But let's go through the bullet points because it hits all the criteria. Number one, influence. DOJ is crazy influential on shmups that came afterward. There is no denying it. The hyper system alone. Think about how many shmups have hypers that aren't even bullet hells. Hypers and DOJ. The hyper system, hugely influential. Then it refines the chaining system that you got in DDP. So refinement makes that even better because the problem with the DDP chaining system, well, I think a little bit of a flaw of it, it is kind of cool, but it's also kind of a flaw is how strict and how tied in the DDP chaining system is where, especially with the bees and stuff, where it feels like if you want to get a really good score in DDP, you kind of need to paint by numbers or whatever. You need to follow those routes. You just have to. Where DOJ, because of the hyper system, it opens up the routing, the chaining, gives a little bit more flexibility and freedom and creativity, but it keeps all of that really well intact. It cuts down on the max bonus thing as well, where in DDP, the reason why you can't bomb or die is because you lose your max and it's basically game over for your score. DOJ kind of tapers down that max and allows you to more focus on chaining. And so for that reason, again, I think that's a very cool adjustment to the scoring system. So the scoring system is absolutely beautiful but another thing about doj that makes it so great of course the presentation the music i think are fantastic i think i remember having a conversation where people felt that they didn't like uh doj's muted color palette compared to the rest of the series where you know afterward dfk has these bright anime-ish sort of style and then ddp before it was kind of bright and saturated but in kind of a different style way doj is actually my favorite looking shmup i love the visuals of this game where it has this sort of dark cyberpunk sort of feel the muted colors but when you get the real colors they pop out i love the the visuals of this game and it, when it comes to game design whenever i look at how does this work how does that work i always look to doj for it's like the bible it's like uh what do you do look to doj doj will tell you what to do it has rank you can even look at how this game does rank compared to grega where in Grega, the rank system is sort of um, a routing mechanic where you try and maximize it here, minimize it there. It's more open-ended. DOJ has a much more forced rank system, which is basically you will play better. You will continue to play better. And the better you play, the harder the game will beat you down, which is a really cool way to increase the difficulty of game where that expert players are still getting a lot out of it, but newer players aren't getting beaten down to a pulp. The only issue with DOJ is I feel like it lacks a definitive release. It really does. Where Ketsu and Grega, thanks to the PS4, I would consider those definitive releases. DOJ on the PS2 is really good. The issue is that it's only white label, so it doesn't have both versions. DOJ on the 360 is funky and strange. I have a whole video reviewing it. It's not a hot flaming piece of garbage like the PS1 DDP port. It's much better than that, but it's not quite there. It doesn't, you know, DOJ deserves better, if you know what I'm saying. So how I t normally played is on Shmup Arch. People played on Shmup Mame. I know it's very popular on Shmup Mame, but now you can play it on low latency Mame and get very good results there. You can play it on Groovy Mame. Uh, so it's very playable. It's just not having, it doesn't really have a commercial release. And I think once it gets that definitive commercial release, I think it will get a lot of attention and the love that it deserves at least i could only hope this is my list of the 30 greatest shmups of all time i hope you all enjoyed it i'm sure it's going to be controversial but it's meant to be fun and also just to kind of introduce you to the games that i think a lot of players that i hang around with at least consider extremely influential and important and will clear the air i think because this sort of information really isn't out there all that well and people when they talk about the genre again the list that you typically see are stuff like Space Invaders, <laughs> R-Type. I think R-Type's fantastic, but it's like Space Invaders, R-Type, Gradius, Ikaruga, right? You know, those are the games that you see. And then like random games like, you know, UN Squadron's a great game, but is it the among the greatest shmups ever made? I, I wouldn't say so. So thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, I'd like to end by thanking my patrons and really appreciate the support I'm getting on Patreon. It goes a lot to supporting the channel, I'll say that much. 
And yeah, if you could like, subscribe, all that YouTubing good stuff, I'd really appreciate it. Adios, everyone. So thank you to 72 PCT Water, Adam Pearson, Adrian Reyes, Eternal Solitude, Ukshay Wadker, Dingo, Handicapped, Anthony A, Ben, Ben Wynn, Borgie22, Brian Reboot, Brian Shiver, Corio, Daniel Savage, Delta Tango 6, Disco Star Slayer, Dominic NG, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Geriatric Don Maku, Haosu, Ilya, Kiwi, JLab, JBRPG, Joe Angelo, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Kikoman589, Lurridge, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Meher Kalendrian, Minung, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Nine, Okla Googles, Philip Mason, Portal 6-3, Ram Q, Raul, Real Skeen, Sketchy Raccoon, The Boot Rex, TRM, Sugumo, Plasmo, Yishi, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.